So we're going to be looking at heat energy and in particular specific heat capacity and latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporisation. So this is the definition of specific heat capacity. It is the amount of heat energy needed to raise per unit mass of substance by unit temperature. So what that means is if we have per unit mass of substance, that is one kg of substance, and we want to increase its temperature by one Kelvin, so one Kelvin's a unit temperature, then specific heat capacity tells us how much heat energy is needed to do that. The equation involving specific heat capacity is this one, where delta Q is the heat energy needed or supplied, M is your mass of substance you're heating, C is the specific heat capacity, and delta theta is the change in temperature or the increase in temperature. And from this equation, we can get the units of specific heat capacity. So let's first rearrange to make C the subject. So that will give us C equal to delta Q divided by the mass and divided by the change in temperature. So the units for C would be joules for the energy divided by our units of mass, which is then going to be per kg, and then divided by our units of the temperature change, which would be per Kelvin. So the units for C is joules per kg per Kelvin. So why is water used as a coolant? Well, it's because of its specific heat capacity being very high. And its value is 4,200 joules per kg per Kelvin. And what that means is if we were to raise the temperature of 1 kg of water by 1 Kelvin or 1 degree C, we would need 4,200 joules. So we would need a lot of energy to bring the water to its boiling point. So you need to know an electrical method to determine specific heat capacity of the substance. So in this example, we're going to be heating an aluminium block and we have a thermometer that will be used to determine the temperature change of the aluminium. And we have an immersion heater, which will be heating our block of aluminium. And this immersion heater is connected to a 12 volt power supply. We also have lagging insulation surrounding the aluminium block. And this is to minimise heat loss to the surroundings. So the energy transformation taking place in this experiment is from electrical energy to heat energy. And if you remember your AS theory, electrical energy transferred or electrical work done equals ITV. And if we're assuming 100% efficiency, all that electrical energy is transferred to heating our substance. So in order to find C we need to rearrange this equation to make C the subject. So C will equal ITV divided by M divided by the delta theta. So in order to determine C we will need to know the current that is flowing through our immersion heater. So we would use an ammeter of this. We'll also need to know the voltage across the immersion heater. So we would connect a voltmeter parallel to, to the immersion heater to determine this. We need to know the mass of our aluminium block. So we could use a, a weighing balance to determine this. And we need to know the rise in temperature of our aluminium block. So we first measure its initial temperature. And then after time t, with the, which we're using a stopwatch for, we can then measure the final temperature with our thermometer. And here are some experimental limitations and solutions that you need to know. So the obvious one is heat loss to surroundings. And remember, we insulated the container with lagging. Also, the temperature still rises after switching off the immersion heater because the change in temperature is not instant. So you need to make sure you measure the highest temperature reached. 
Well, so if we were dealing with a liquid rather than a solid, then the liquid container is also being heated. So we would need to take that into account when we're determining the specific heat capacity in our calculation to also have the heat energy needed to heat the container. And also we need to make sure that we stir the liquid because you could be getting a false reading in a liquid. So here we have an animation showing that when we increase the heat energy to a substance, what is happening to its temperature. So what you can see is that initial heating is increasing the temperature of the solid, the ice. And then when the ice reaches zero degrees C, the temperature remains constant and we're supplying heat, but the solid, that heat energy is turning the solid into liquid. And when all the solid is changed into liquid, the heat energy is then being used to increase the temperature of the liquid. And then when we reach 100 degrees C, the boiling point of water, the temperature remains constant and the heat energy is now being used to turn the liquid into gas. And when all the liquid is changed into a gas, the heat energy is being used to raise the temperature of the gas. So when the solid is changing into a liquid, we are now dealing with a specific latent heat of fusion. And this is the amount of heat energy required to convert per unit mass of solid at its melting point into liquid at that same temperature. So if we change one kg of solid into liquid at the melting point, the specific latent heat of fusion tells us how much heat energy we would need to do that. Now changing a liquid into a gas involves the specific latent heat of vaporisation. And it is the amount of heat energy required to convert per unit mass of liquid at its boiling point into gas at the same temperature. So if we were to convert one kg of liquid into gas at the boiling point, the specific latent heat of vaporisation tells us how much heat energy would be needed to do this. So going back to the graph of heat energy against temperature, we can see here we're increasing the temperature of our solid, so that involves a heat capacity. And then at the melting point, where the solid is changing into a liquid, that involves latent heat of fusion. And then when all the solid is turned into a liquid, we're then raising the temperature of our liquid so that involves a heat capacity and then when the liquid reaches the boiling point temperature is constant and so all the heat energy is it is converting the liquid into a gas so that involves a latent heat of vaporization and when all the liquid is turned into a gas the heat energy is being used to raise the temperature of the gas and raising the temperature involves a heat capacity so these are the five steps in heating a solid to become a gas.